So in our grade two coding curriculum, you can see from our Ontario curriculum, it reads as uh, C3.1, solve problems and create computational representation of mathematical situations by writing and executing code, including code that involves sequential and concurrent events. And so if you notice from our grade one, it's actually everything is exactly the same as the grade one expectation, except for the concurrent events, which is the build on in this particular case for grade two. So grade twos are expected to be able to do the grade one coding of sequential, but now we're gonna add in concurrent. So when we talk about concurrent events, this is where you have two things happening essentially at the same time. And so if we think about in video games, we've got our two race cars racing down the track versus each other. Those are concurrent events. Uh, again, we can have our two sprites in Scratch, or we can have uh, two turtles in uh, Lynx coding, basically working at the same time. And that would be considered concurrent events as well. Another way of thinking of concurrent events though, and one that makes it, and one that would be very challenging to program both in Scratch and Lynx coding, would be the concept of an object moving and changing size at the same time. So in real life, from a physical representation standpoint, my buddy here, the eagle, Eddie the eagle, is able to do a concurrent event and that as you see he is moving toward us he's also becoming larger at the same time and as he moves away from us he's becoming smaller on our screen if we were to program this though from a interactive visual standpoint we would have to code both of those as concurrent events in order to accomplish the same effect and so that gives you another another example of what concurrent events can look like. I'm going to turn it over to our student ambassadors once again, and they're going to show you what they came up with in terms of concurrent events. As I this for this, I took a one, like clicked events, then I took a repeat, short to seven hundred, as you can see. And I went up to uh, take take this, put it to two bears. Exactly two two bears are actually there for nothing. Just I mean, scratch back move there. This one I did the same thing with the P, but it, uh, I took this one and glide to these so it glide side to side side. And this one just glides to Casey using glide uh, well, yeah, this. So yeah, if you want to see it in action, they slowly move. Hi everyone. Today I am going, I did a second project on Scratch and it's called Balls. Here's how it works. So, as you can see, two balls, two balls are moving at different spots at the same time. I did this by doing when green flagged cl clicked right over here, saying "wee" and point in direction 180 degrees, which is down. And then I said if touching edge then point in direction zero degrees and then move forward 75 steps and i did the same coding for the base wall except i added this block to play a pop sound like this thanks for listening and bye we're going to learn about concurrent events using Lynx coding. So first, I'm going to run this code for you. Okay. 
in this way. So now I'm going to show you how the code works. So what happens is first I have to make this guy walk up to this girl. So to make him go forward, we're going to use the set heading command and set it to 90. Then we're going to use the glide command, which is going to make him kind of glide across the screen to the girl. So I set it to 250, which is how much it needs to reach the girl. And I set the speed to 1. You don't have to, but I did just to slow it down a bit for you. And, uh, and now we're going to actually make the girl turn into a tree. So if you want a command to happen when a turtle touches another turtle, you have to, to acknowledge that it is a touch turtle command using a colon and then touch turtle. So I did a very long procedure using the set opacity command and you can if you want to too, but really all you have to do is use the shit, sh set shape command to uh, change the, uh, the form of the turtle. And that's it. This is my example of my concurrent event project. So first of all, what I did was I made a procedure. The first one was a go underscore one procedure, which made both of my turtles glide 104. And then I made the second turtle to do the same command just backwards. And then I added a button, which is a stop all command, which made everything stop.